Hi everyone, welcome to our second virtual roundtable. I hope you all are healthy and I just wanted to let you know that um, your extended scouting family and friends are all here to support you. So if you're having any kind of rough times, please reach out. We, we are all here for you as, a, as an extended family. Um, so like I said, welcome. And I have lots of good things to report. Our scouts are on the move. Um, our PACs and troops are holding virtual meetings. I've seen PAC 326 out there held two virtual campfires and the crossovers are starting to happen again. So scouting has definitely gained its momentum. Um, I personally have had two virtual den meetings. They're a little squirrely, but it is, it is a lot of fun and it's great to see these kids in action. And we've also had all of our online merit badge classes going on for the last five weeks and they've been selling out. So please encourage your kids to get involved in that if they haven't yet. Um, other than that, our scouts are out there doing so many wonderful acts of kindness. They're making masks, sending letters, collecting food, picking up trash in their neighborhoods, finishing up their ego projects, and serving as great examples in their communities. I know my kids um, don't enjoy picking up litter, but it is fun to get outside and do our part. Um, speaking of doing our part, in our virtual camp out this weekend, if I'm not mistaken, I thought I saw it in my little hard packet that we're doing a neighborhood cleanup in there as well. So, okay, raise your hand out there if you're signed up for the virtual camp out. Okay, I see, I'm, okay, I can't totally see you, but I know people are out there raising their hand. You know how I know? Because over 1,300 people, you heard me, 1,300 people are already signed up for our virtual camp out. And that's across 25 states and three different countries. So huge thank you to Bob and Julie Bucciarelli and Zach Knock for all the organization of this event. It is gonna be fantastic. A little rainy this weekend, but hey, we're scouts. We can deal with that. So if you haven't registered yet, please go out there and register. It's not too late. We got our camp bag today and we're excited. The kids were already digging through it. Um, also, what's exciting is that we have our Silver Beaver recipients for, for the class of 2019 that were announced. So I would like to take a moment and, and recognize a few of those scouters, Julie Bucciarelli, Jim Dombeck, Jenny Fox, Debbie Froelich, Dan Kubik, John McGinnis, Robert Moskal, Janice Scott, and Joe Welcome. Congratulations to all of you and thank you for all of your hard work in your communities, our council, everything you do has made a difference. I'm so excited about everything that you guys have accomplished I'm even more excited about the things that you guys are going to do as we move forward in scouting. Um, and if you are interested, please come out. Hopefully you guys will be able to come out on June 18th to our council recognition dinner, where we would like to give them the, the due recognition and brag on them all night. So again, thank you for all that you guys do in scouting. Um, tonight we have a great program for you. We have, um, if you're on the, the Cub Scouts are already in motion and they're gonna be learning about the fall membership campaign. And later for you guys on the Scouts PSA side, you've got some summer camp planning coming up. Other than that, on our agenda tonight, we have some COVID-19 response information we'll be sharing with you. Um, Clint will be, will be doing a program fee recap and then we'll be doing some Q&A together to help um, answer any questions you have. So guys, that's what I have and thanks again for being here. I'm gonna pass the mic. Not you know, for real, but I'm gonna pass it when he gets up here. Thanks for being here. Hello, everybody out there. My name is John Garn. I'm the field director for the East Side, and uh, we've got some COVID updates for you. Um, Council and national organizations have set out guidance for safety and scouting at home during these um, unprecedented times. Uh, please continue to follow the CDC guidelines to keep yourself and your family uh, healthy and safe. Continue all of the social distancing practices, uh, cover your sneeze and, uh, and your coughs in your, in your arm, face masks, um, avoid touching your face, uh, clean and disinfect, uh, disinfect uh, regularly surfaces that are used, uh, stay at home if you're sick. Um, also wash your hands. Uh, remember to, to take 20 seconds, 24 seconds to, to wash your hands. A good tip would be to say the scout oath and law. With the current stay-at-home order in Illinois, in, in Illinois, uh, and the council, uh, the council has taken these steps. Um, uh, the Norris 
uh, service center is closed until June 1st, but we will have um, a pickup, curbside pickup for orders, and that will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. So if you have orders, go ahead onto the council website under uh, Scout Shop. There you'll be able to order and you'll be able to uh, to let them know you're coming. Also for uh, Scouts BSA, you'll be able to, for those Eagle packets that are, um, are have a special circumstance, go ahead and uh, email the Scout Shop and let them know you'll be coming to pick up or drop off Eagle packets as well. And that will be available. Those orders can be made online. You can uh, call in. Uh, Lori or the, the staff there will be there in the mornings on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, so you can also uh, call in for your orders as well. The Naperville Scout Shop will, will continue to be closed and, until uh, the stay at home guidelines and orders are, are lifted. All council and district uh, meetings will continue to be virtual uh, throughout this time. And when the, the order the stay at home order is lifted, then those will go back to in person. We're, we're excited for that time to come, right? Also, we've, uh, we've made some decisions to further delay some of our camps and uh, later on you'll be able to uh, hear from Alex Klausing and Clint Scharf about those changes, but um, we, we have announced that Weeble Scouts uh, resident camp um, is been going to be delayed and uh, most of the or all of the June camps will be delayed as well. So more more uh, will come on that in a minute. Um, also uh, on the council website, most of you have been able to access that, but on the council web website right there, there's a yellow band with the digital scouting resources. And so um, that's uh, periodically updated. So make sure you're checking back in. Um, uh, frequently on that, there's uh, several uh, links right there in the yellow band. You have the, the Eagle Scout extension form that you can fill out there. There's information on uh, all kinds of advancement, Cub Scout, uh, Scouts BSA, um, Quartermaster, uh, Summit the Board, all of those things are on there as well. But if you click into the digital scouting resources, there's a plethora of, of information there for you. There's um, scouting at home and how to do video conferencing, some free internet options there. Uh, there's online advancement. Uh, there's a video about online advancement. Um, there's also information about merit badges and STEM activities. Um, there's also activities such as the 30 day challenge, uh, adventure bingo for all programs and the virtual field trips. And so um, there's resources from the national organization, uh, resources from our council, and so um, go ahead and check those out and uh, be informed and, and have some fun with the activities on there. Uh, lastly, advancement has been uh, challenging during this health crisis, but not impossible. And our scouts uh, have found ways and continue to find ways to, to keep advancing and keep having fun in scouting. And uh, I would encourage you and to encourage them to continue that effort. Um, we, we want a special uh, thank you to our advancement committee and Bob Charles that leads that for their, their diligent efforts in making sure that we have the most up, updated and current information and, uh, and that that's posted on our, on our digital uh, scouting resources uh, website. On to uh, digital safety reminders. There's, uh, there's a lot of uh, virtual meetings that happens uh, through patrol meetings and troop meetings, and we wanna make sure that we're safe and, and uh, can, can continue that. So as, as scouting moves to, to uh, more and more virtual and, and online platforms, here's some reminders to keep our kids safe. This guidance uh, applies to all online scouting activities and meetings. Follow all youth protection policies. All youth protection policies still apply on, in the online environment. Ensure you always have two leadership or online activity, activities and meetings. Our ban on one-on-one on -one contact continues and that applies to adult leaders and youth alike and their interaction, interactions. 
whether in person, online, through web conferencing, over the phone, through text, face, uh, FaceTime, or, or other means, uh, make sure that you're following these, these guidelines. All aspects of the scouting program are open to observation by parents. So uh, it's great that parents can come and, and participate as well. So I encourage that. Use um, business oriented conferencing platforms that include good safety and privacy features instead of platforms with other primary purposes such as gaming um, platforms. Review the terms of service, safety, and privacy features and data collection policies on any platform that you use. And review the BSA digital privacy and social media guidelines linked, um, linked below. Regularly review and implement the latest security features on your chosen platform to avoid unauthorized visitors or other security issues in your meetings. Just as you put in place safety uh, practices in your meetings and in your, your campouts, we want you to do that online as well. So use unique meeting identification numbers for each session. Utilize password features for all meetings. Do not publish meetings uh, invitations via public for, uh, forums and remind attendees not to pass along uh, these invitations. Use waiting room features to manage letting individuals into your meetings. Disable features that you will not need, such as screen sharing uh, by non-hosts, private chats, and whiteboards. Do not record online activities and meetings that include youth participants. You may do so for if it's just adults, but if it's including youth, do not uh, record those. Safeguard personal information. So as, uh, as you collect people's information, make sure that you're uh, safeguarding that. For example, through web forms used to register people online for online meetings, you should not uh, post or disclose at, uh, at the point of collection, um, disclose those, but also let them know that what you're gonna be using that information for. The notice should be conspicuous and written in plain English. Meeting organizers must keep such private uh, information, uh, information private and not share the youth's personal information with anyone except the youth's parents or guardian or unit leaders. For example, a merit badge counselor should not publicly post or otherwise show a roster with personal information of scouts the counselor has worked with. So be sure to, to safeguard those, those uh, personal identifiers and, and information. Mm -hmm. Collect personal information from, uh, from youth under 13 is not authorized. So be careful when you're working with those younger scouts. Uh, do not collect personal information directly from youth under 13 years of age due to the parental notice and consent requirements under the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPA. You should collect any data needed from the parent or legal guardian only. So um, as you're out there, uh, keeping keep our scouts active and, and, and engaged, make sure you're following the safety precautions and things that we just outlined and, uh, and look for our scouting's digital resources for, for those and for uh, lots of fun activities. And now I'm going to turn the time over to uh, Clint Sharp, our CEO. Hey, John, thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We have uh, right now, uh, Maria, tell me we got, we got over 100 volunteers attending right now. 122. 122 folks joining us for our virtual roundtable tonight. Thank you very much. I wish I could see you all face to face, uh, but I'm glad you're taking time tonight to talk to us. Uh, it's roundtable, so I feel like I should tell a joke. All right. They're saying no, so we're going to tell a joke. Penguin walks into a store and says, has anyone seen my dad? And the storekeeper goes, what's he look like? He's a penguin. All right, one more. A um, hydrogen atom walks into a store and says, has anyone seen my electron? And the storekeeper goes, are you sure you're missing it? He goes, yeah, I'm positive. So, a little middle school chemistry. All right, so wouldn't be a roundtable without a joke, and that's out of the way. 
Hey, uh, last week, uh, our council sent some uh, very serious messaging out about a program fee we're implementing for the 2021 program year. And uh, if you have emailed me uh, questions about that and I have not yet gotten back to you, uh, my apologies. Uh, my commitment is that everyone who has emailed me will get a reply before the weekend is out. Uh, still catching up on a few things uh, there. So I appreciate your patience as we get, uh, get back to you as quickly as possible. Uh, during this section here, we're gonna be taking some questions uh, over the chat. So if I don't address them specifically or they're not addressed in our FAQ, uh, our uh, John and Maria are going to kind of go through some of those questions, pose them to me. I'll read them back to the group and do my best to try and answer them. So the one thing I get asked is, you know, why is our council doing this and why are they doing it now? Well, our board made this decision uh, back in March, something we've been looking at now for uh, almost a year. We've done some research on, we've done some analysis on. We felt it was important to get the information out sooner than later. Uh, we did not want to be in a position of holding this information from units while they're doing budget planning and program planning for the, 20, uh, the upcoming year. So the decision was made that it was important to put it out to everyone as soon as possible so they could uh, have that information to do their planning. Uh, and the program fee is uh, coming with some changes. Uh, we're going to stop doing our family friends of scouting campaign in 2021. Now those donations and those gifts are critically important to 2020. And if you've uh, given a gift to support the Friends of Scouting campaign, thank you. Uh, those funds are very, very much needed. If you haven't had that opportunity yet and have the capacity to do so, please consider making a gift. Uh, you can go to threefirescouncil.org and click the donate button. We appreciate all the support you can provide our local council uh, to fund its operating needs uh, to support uh, your troop and our members and our camps. So it is operationally necessary. We're going to discontinue the family friends of scouting campaign where we go to troops and court of honors and troop meetings and ask for donations. We're gonna to move to a more sophisticated uh, type of fundraising uh, campaign, more community driven uh, with invitations to special community events and sponsorships and things like that. So uh, again, thank you for your support. Uh, our council has operated at an operational deficit for the better part of a decade. And we've used up our uh, reserves and can no longer operate that way. So we've had to change the model by which we operate. Uh, we've reduced uh, comp and benefits and payroll and reduced expenses, and now we need to change the way we fund our council a little bit to uh, make that balance. Thank you for your concerns, your comments, your questions, and your patience. And uh, more importantly, thank you for all you do for your troop and your crew. Um, I was a troop committee chairman and venture crew chairman for the better part of six years. And I'm going to tell you, uh, it was extremely rewarding to work with our scouts and venturers. Uh, going camping, going to summer camp, planning high adventure, balancing our budget, doing our fundraiser, uh, watching young men in our uh, scout troop advance towards Eagle and grow mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and to work with our young girls in our adventure crew program do the same. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your support. Uh, even in, the, in a virtual environment, making things happen for young people is greatly appreciated. Along with our program theme, uh, district activities next year year will be included in 2021 between four to six different events balanced between Cub Scout events and Scouts BSA venturing events. We're going to work with our program committees and district activity committees to make sure there's an event planned all throughout the council. They're not all going to be in mid December. They're not all going to be in Von or Cantini. We're going to work with state parks and uh, forest districts and uh, county park districts and our partners to make sure we have programs accessible throughout the uh, council in multiple locations. Uh, some of them will be day programs, some of them will be half day programs, some of them will be overnight programs. So there will be options for families to choose from. Also included uh, next year is all training. So training academy and training expo. Uh, the, the required training you need for your job. Introdu introduction to outdoor leader skills and job specific training. You, those are trainings mandated by the BSA, the Three Fires Council, for you to have your role. We're not going to charge people extra to come to that. We're going to take that barrier out of that as well. We're also going to enhance and uh, ramp up our scholarship program because we want to make sure that no family is left behind. Every family that wants to be a scout will have that opportunity regardless of their ability to pay. So we'll work with your troop and work with that family to make sure we find a way to make sure those costs are covered. So that said, I'm going to open up for some questions. Uh, John, Maria, you have a, a question you want me to uh, read out and share? I want to invite Ana Tui back up, our council commissioner, so we can help uh, help us. You got a question yet? 
They like to joke. Okay. Don't thank thank you. you like a, I got yeah. two more. No, 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 no. Please ask a question. We don't want any more jokes. So we have a question from Troop 199. Do you have any advice for recruiting during this pandemic? Recruiting, uh, advice on recruiting during the pandemic. Uh, actually, we're going to be adding some more resources to our digital page about that. Our national organizations or marketing pages offer some of that. Uh, but I would encourage you to continue. The most effective way to recruit scouts to join your troop is by scouts asking their friends, uh, parents asking the friend, their friends and neighbors, telling them the great experience your scout has and telling them the things you do and invite them to join uh, an online activity with you. And then when you get face to face, invite them to come to a, a meeting or activity. Uh, I know that as soon as we reach phase three, uh, which hopefully, you know, God willing, will be uh, very soon. We'll be able to institute uh, some small group troop activities, and we're hoping to share information with you guys about uh, some community campfires where you can invite your troop back uh, to uh, campfires and invite some friends in in a socially distant, responsible environment, again, in small groups. So uh, look forward to that information. Number one way to recruit kids is for your parents to go out and tell their friends what a great experience your scout is having and ask them to join you. Let me, let me offer something I've seen too, at least within my neighborhood. We're talking about recruiting kids. I've seen more kids out on their bikes with their fishing poles trying to find something fun outdoors to do. So now we've got this situation in our world where the kids are craving to be outdoors, they're craving to look for that, something they can go do on their own independently. And guess what? Scouting fits all that. So if you see those kids out there with their fishing poles, I know it's my son and Nestor keeping their six feet, but invite them to come to the next fishing trip you have, because I, I think that need is out there right now. So it's not necessarily a direct tip, but it's definitely a change I'm seeing out there. I want to suggest that if your family is out taking walks around the neighborhood or bike riding in the neighborhood or hiking nature trails, I would suggest you wear your scout uniform while doing it. Allow people to approach you and ask you about scout. And invite we only have 1,300 people. We need more. Yeah, other states uh, live there. The parks, state parks, etc. Is okay. Is traveling to the old tour plans in order to have insurance coverage for campouts? All right, so there's a lot in that question under wrap. So the question was, if Illinois is still in a, a state home order in June, while neighboring states are not, you know, can we take our scout troop out of state? I want to be very cautious about that. So uh, let me look into a better answer. But my gut feeling right now is that we need to uh, be respectful of the orders where we live uh, and the infection rate where we live and the hospitalization rate where we live. Uh, because one of the worst things we can do is take that somewhere else, right? Uh, so we're actually going to be paying attention to that for summer camp, for example. And Alex is going to be joining me here in a few minutes and talking about that, you know, about how we uh, get kids to summer camp, how they will experience summer camp, and then keep uh, 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 troops uh, into small co cohorts, and they'll experience camp together. We have a lot of Wisconsin kids that come to Freeland Leslie. Uh, so when our Wisconsin kids come to camp and our Illinois kids come to camp, we're going to keep them in separate cohorts uh, as they experience camp this summer. And uh, as far as uh, any new tour permit requirements, uh, National has not announced anything like that. Uh, so let's just stay tuned and, and see where we are uh, coming this summer. We've delayed our summer uh, start uh, to, I think the first week of summer camp is now gonna be June 28th, that, uh, that Monday. That'll be, uh, it's actually the start date for week two uh, will be our start date for camp. Our summer camp staff will come in a week earlier to do prep and training and readiness. And our OA ordeal, or excuse me, OA uh, spring fellowship weekend We'll uh, actually you know, pivot from a spring fellowship to a summer fellowship uh, to start the camp off as well. All right. Any other questions? Uh, will the, and can you please repeat the question? Will the cost of camp be reduced because of the new fee? So the program fee is going to supplement and provide funding for all the district activities. Uh, it is. Uh, we will lock in our camping fees for 2021. Uh, at the 2020 rate. So there'll be no increase in camping fees for day camp, summer camp, or resident camp for next season. Uh, after one full uh, fiscal year uh, review of the program fee, we'll evaluate what fees need to be adjusted for, uh, for council camping programs. What else? Joke time. No. No? Got a question. All right, another question. 
with the new program fee, are we expecting 100% participation? So um, we the question is, do we expect 100% participation in the program fee? We anticipate that families that are under economic stress and financial hardship could apply for a scholarship. So no, we don't expect 100% participation. Uh, those that uh, can't, that are exper experiencing financial distress and hardship, uh, we will make sure they have an opportunity uh, to participate uh, through our scholarship program. If you go to our council page, threefirescouncil.org, scroll to the bottom on the tiles. One of the first tiles you'll come to is uh, about our council program fee. It's got a letter to parents, a letter to unit leaders, a letter to district leaders. Uh, it's got a video, uh, it's got an infographic, an FAQ, and our revised scholarship form. And any, uh, any material we update uh, to that, uh, updates to our FAQ or scholarship forms, uh, will be added to that site as we go on. We don't have all the answers yet. Our council program committee and district activities committee, we've got some things to work out as far as how we budget and plan the district events and activities for 2021. Our commitment is that we're gonna try and have all that done before the end of June uh, so that units have that for program planning. And I would just like to add that we're hoping to see an uptick in the number of people who participate in district program activities because it's it's included. It used to be that the district would offer the, the activities as a backbone for units, you know, that kind of supplement and help. We're actually hoping to see a huge lift in that and get our community built around some of these district, these district activities. When I was a scout at District Campery was a great experience. I was in a small troop of about a dozen and a half guys and going to a district campery and seeing that there were hundreds of other kids in our community that were in scouts I didn't even know about uh, was pretty exciting. Uh, so having a, a well-funded and a well-attended district event creates a little excitement in a larger scouting community for our members. Next question. How are EGLE projects able to proceed with social distancing? Is there info on how the council is handling these projects? So the question was about uh, conducting EGLE Scout projects during social distancing, and there is some guidance available to you. Uh, if you go to the council webpage, we've posted information about advancement, uh, and again, scroll down to one of those tiles, and it gives you some information about uh, not only conducting EGLE projects but during a, in the social distancing, um, it also talks about how those timelines are being extended for young people. So if a young person's up against that 18th birthday and this pandemic is affecting their ability to complete their project on time, uh, there will be extensions granted. And you got to ask for it. Um, but uh, our, our Council Advancement Committee, Bob Charles and the, and the District Advancement Chairs are doing a great job staying on top of that. As far as doing them socially distant, we know right now that under our Illinois guidelines, uh, that we're not supposed to gather outside of our home family unit. So Anna and I here are about six feet apart from each other. Uh, and our scouts who do that, they're gonna plan and do a project in an outdoor community event. We need to make sure they can maintain distance, wear a face mask uh, in, in that environment as well. Yeah, and I would just like to add that there are kids out there finishing their Eagle projects. They've had a unique challenge, some different changes they've had to make with how they are arranging the workers to show, but it, there is possibilities there. So if, if a child is getting hung up, please reach out and we can help, you know, figure out, you know, is there a real constraint there or are there other alternatives for that? I have a special message to our Life Scouts who are working on Eagle projects. I gotta tell you guys, I am so proud of you. Uh, those Eagle projects come across my desk. I get to sign all those applications. Uh, you are finding creative ways of, of getting things done. I'm proud of you. Our community means what you're doing. You're a beacon of hope builder, so please keep it up. How do you think the fee will affect the overall number of registered youth? Um, the question was, how do I think the fee will impact the overall number of registered youth? Uh, my hope is that a family doesn't look at that fee and say, well, we just can't afford scouting. Uh, our offer for scholarships is genuine, and we hope every family that has that financial need uh, will ask. Uh, so that we can actually can, can help them continue when scouting and, or even a brand new member that may be considering joining uh, help them join scouting uh, so um, do i anticipate that some families may opt out because of that unfortunately that may be the reality um, and it may be the reality because uh, just so many families are going through some financial stress right now but our offer for scholarship and support that is genuine and we want families that are struggling with that decision uh, to ask for help and they'll be kept confidential uh, and if we're help is asked for it'll be good all right 
All right, guys, I'm sure we got a lot of more questions coming in. We'll try and get back to them. I'm going to uh, thank Anna again for being with us. Uh, Alex is going to join us. We're going to talk about summer camp, uh, health and safety a little bit. And while Anna is leaving, thank you. And Alex is coming. Uh, another joke. Three legged dog walks into a store and says, I'm looking for the man that shot my paw. This <laughs> is pretty good. And yes, I did get all these from the Backup Boys Life magazine. So. All right. Hey, let me introduce uh, Alex Clausen. Uh, Alex is our uh, program director for the Three Fires Council. Uh, Alex is an Eagle Scout. He's a former camp director. And uh, come on in here, Alex. There's more on the screen here. Um, great thing. Uh, one of the great things about Alex's background, we're very blessed to have him as our program director. Uh, Alex was head ranger uh, at Philmont Scout Range for two summers. One summer. So uh, basically, all the rangers at Philmont this guy hired and trained. So if your crew got lost somewhere in 1996, you know, <laughs> or uh, 2006, yeah. somewhere in 2006 in Philmont, probably his fault. Uh, he also comes to us as associate director of program from Northern Tier Canoe Base. So Alex knows a great deal about planning and organizing camps and organizing them safely. So Alex, thank you very much. Alex, um, we've made the decision through our program cabinet and through our health and safety committee to delay the opening of uh, Camp Kieran Lessel this summer. So week zero and week one, uh, we've had about 18 troops that were registered to participate in those two weeks. They're being personally contacted about moving their reservation to July. Uh, Weeblo's resident camp session one, which was also uh, right there in, in June, we rescheduled that for the end of July. Um, and our, our camp staff will come in now a week before week two to do their training and site preparation. So I'd like to share some of the things we're doing in a high level uh, to help prepare uh, for camp. And I know that the Wisconsin uh, Supreme Court has uh, basically nullified the governor's stay-at-home orders um, in Wisconsin. We don't know how that's going to play out, uh, but we are working with the uh, local health department there in Adams and Marquette County uh, to make sure that we are compliant with all health-related uh, issues, concerns, because our local health department is actually the one that will issue us a permit to conduct camp. So. We don't know how the governor's orders will impact that, but we've maintained a close working relationship with the health department. I feel like we're on the right track to make sure we can do everything we can to open camp safely and to make sure that the majority of our families uh, will feel comfortable sending their kids to camp. Give us enough time between lockdown and opening uh, to have that uh, breathing room as it were to make sure uh, families are more comfortable being at camp this summer as well. So Alex, some of, what are the, some of the things we're doing uh, to make CFL a little different this summer with a mind towards health and safety? Absolutely. So one of the, the first things we, we decided we wanted to do was to give everybody a, a bottle of hand sanitizer. So I have my Free Fires Council bottle of hand sanitizer here with me. So, so all of our campers and staff will, will receive one of, the, one of these bottles uh, when they get to, uh, get to camp. Uh, we are also going to provide uh, buffs uh, for all of our campers and staff to wear. And these are reusable cloth yeah, bottles. Reusable face masks. So, uh, those will be provided to, to our campers and staff as an additional safety measure. We'll have uh, additional bottles of hand sanitizer around uh, our, our populated areas, program areas, um, in the campsites, things like that. Uh, we also are going to uh, be encouraging uh, hand washing uh, very frequently. Uh, so after program rotations, things like that, we're going to uh, make sure that we direct our scouts and leaders that are uh, along with them to uh, to our hand washing stations uh, yeah. nearby. We're going to be sending every troop that comes to camp a pre-camp packet. In that is going to be a roster of their youth and adults that will be attending camp and disposable thermometers. Uh, when your troop gathers on Sunday afternoon to come to camp, we're going to ask every scout to take their temperature. We're going to record that. We're also going to ask parents to assign saying that their home has been you know healthy for the last two weeks. Any scout that uh, pops the temperature during the screening uh, may not be allowed to travel with you to camp. You may have to wait a day and, and be temperature free before making the trip up to CFL. Their temperature will also be rechecked when they arrive at camp. We'll offer regular health, health screening and temperature checks uh, for campers, but we'll also do that for our staff every day. Uh, so our staff will go through a medical screening every day before they go to their program areas and interact with uh, the campers. Uh, we're looking at how do we uh, keep the camp experience to a small group of, of people, maybe a cohort of no more than 40 people. And that 40, it could be one troop, it could be two troops, it could be three troops, uh, would experience camp together. 
uh, no campfire ceremonies this this year. Uh, so no opening and closing campfires, no large council uh, camp wide flag assemblies. Uh, the uh, program outside program areas would happen in the troop site. Our commissary, our patrol cooking method, we will continue our patrol cooking, uh, but instead of uh, scouts coming to the commissary for supplies, the commissary will come to your troop site to deliver supplies for you. Uh, there'll be additional focus on health and safety. We'll have uh, spray bottles uh, for a diluted bleach cleaner uh, for each patrol, each program area. We'll also have bottles of RTU, that's a ready to use uh, uh, food safety cleaner for surfaces and areas that uh, handle food in your troop site. So we're, we're constantly addressing and modifying these. We hope to have a full uh, menu of additional ways we're gonna change. And hopefully by uh, the next couple of weeks, by the end of this month, the end of May, we'll host a, uh, a special town hall on summer camp health and safety uh, for scout masters and for parents that want to hear more about how we're going to uh, make camp even safer. Some of you may or may not know that we have 150 different standards that the camp has to meet under BSA guidelines to operate as a Boy Scout summer camp. Those 150 guidelines uh, will be adhering to all of them, including staff training, uh, and we're ramping them up uh, even more uh, with guidance from the American Camping Association, the CDC, and the Wisconsin Department of Public Health. Now, one thing I'd point out too, as part of one of those guidelines is a communicable disease uh, prevention plan. So uh, this is something that we've already thought about uh, even before this year, or just this year, we're putting some extra attention on it. Absolutely. Well, Alex, what else should we know about summer camp this summer? One of the things that you mentioned that I think is important that, that I'm getting a lot of questions about is, is how do we maintain social distancing. So I think um, you kind of alluded to the, this idea of concentric circles or cohorts. Um, and we are still kind of flushing out exactly what that looks like. But, but this idea is that, it, you know, you, within each state's plan, we have, uh, you know, you can gather those up to 10 people or up to 50 people or, you know, there's different numbers across the board. Uh, we're planning essentially for, for 50 people is kind of the expectation. So between uh, members of the troop, uh, as well as the staff that would be uh, interacting with those, those groups, uh, it's kind of where we're landing on that 40 number. So, uh, so we're really uh, gonna focus on trying to limit the, the interaction between those cohorts as well. Um, so the social distance will um, will be maintained between the, the groups themselves um, as well as within the groups. Uh, so we're, we're really trying to uh, flush that out, but, uh, uh, but that's, uh, I think that's going to be a key to, to our, our success this summer. To give an example of one of the ideas we're considering right now, uh, Camp Freedom Leslie has seven different program areas within the camp. So uh, your troop may only get to experience five of those seven. Uh, but if, uh, take, uh, for example, your troop may go to the waterfront on Monday, and you would spend all day at the waterfront on Monday working whatever merit badges the, the scouts can during that day. On Tuesday, they may go to uh, shooting sports and field sports uh, and do that all day Tuesday. On Wednesday, it could be ecology, and on Thursday, scout craft, and on Friday, uh, new frontiers. So every day, you would experience a different program area, but only that cohort would be in that program area during the day. And our camp staff would be there to support uh, that cohort and all the merit badge classes that go on uh, during that time. Adult leaders would also be expected to stay with their cohort during the time and supplement the camp staff. Our camp staff will manage equipment, material, curriculum, and do all the health and safety check down, wipe downs between uses as well. So that's one of the uh, options we're considering. And with that, we would, when we deliver breakfast uh, materials in the morning, we would also deliver lunch. So that after you uh, cook and uh, clean up from lunch, uh, breakfast, you would pack your lunch and pack lunch with you to your program area. We're going to be encouraging troops to look at more biodegradable disposables this summer. Uh, so they have less disc cleaning to do as well. So John tells me we have a question. Um, got a few questions. Uh, what were the results of the survey if parents are going to send the kids to camp? The, the, the question, and thank you, Alex, you don't mind. Sure. Um, the question was, what were the results of the survey we got back of, about uh, parents sending their kids to camp? The overwhelming message was that parents that want to send their kids to camp will be much more comfortable sending their kids to camp in July. Uh, so that was one of the one of the decisions made in delaying our, our time to July. Uh, also, given where the states, Wisconsin and Illinois were at the time we made the decision, we felt it prudent uh, to delay to that as well. Yep. Another question is, uh, how will the 200 plus scouts safely use the same shower and restroom facilities? 
So great question. The question is how well all the people at camp use the uh, shower houses at camp safely. And we're still working on that solution right now. We may have to bring in some temporary shower units. Uh, there will be enhanced cleaning and deep cleaning throughout the day. We may assign individual stalls to individual units. Uh, so the same unit or same cohort uh, uses the shower time, whereas the shower is assigned, it's cleaned down after every cohort. We're still working on the mechanics of that. In fact, we have a task force meeting tomorrow afternoon where that's one of the topics we're trying to work through. Yeah, one of the things I actually highlight is uh, one of the, uh, the struggles, I guess, we've been working through over the last couple of weeks is uh, really sourcing guidance from, from other um, you know, experts and, and subject matter experts and professionals. Um, just today, actually, uh, right before I showed up here, the American Camping Association uh, gave some guidance on, on cleaning and uh, sanitation protocols. So, so that's one of the things that we've been waiting on. Or we anticipate them releasing more uh, guidance uh, about uh, other areas of camp as well. But, um, that guidance is, is, is critical to, to our success and our plan. So we'll, we will definitely be, be looking at that uh, and you, uh, trying to implement that in, in our, our strategy as well. You know, when we look at the Illinois, the Restored Illinois Plan that was released uh, a week or so ago, summer camps are allowed to operate uh, with IDBH approved guidance. And we've been in touch with the IDBH field office in uh, Wheaton, in Springfield, uh, DuPage Health Department, Kane County Health Department, DeKalb County Health Department. Uh, and the unanimous answer is that guidance uh, for operating camps under phase three, IDBH hasn't written yet. Uh, so we're writing up our plans and metrics and sharing that with the Department of Public Health. They love the ideas we're sharing for day camps and summer camps, uh, but we hope to have written confirmed guides from the health department so we know what the goal post is. All right, another question. How will the scout sleep in tents? Does this mean each scout gets their own? So the question was about tenting. Should scouts, uh, scouts sleep in their own tents or can they share tents? Uh, we're working on that right now. One of the suggestions is that uh, every scout uh, can have his, uh, his or her own tent uh, that is consistent with youth protection um, so that you can have a single scout to a single tent. Uh, your larger tents, your nine by nine type style tents that are four person tents may be appropriate for two scouts to share uh, if they sleep head to toe and if their personal gear is kept on the center to actually encourage more distancing. Um, I think most families would be comfortable with siblings sharing a tent, uh, comfortable with that, uh, but we may move to a situation where uh, more and more young people uh, basically just have a, a single tent for themselves for the week. Next question. What if COVID is detected at camp or by a camper who recently visited camp? 14 day non-symptomatic. So the answer, the question was, what if we have a, a scout that uh, we learn uh, after attending camp uh, does have COVID. Uh, we will notify as part of our communicable disease plan, uh, we will notify all families that someone that attended camp will notify uh, was, was uh, tested positive. Uh, we will do an enhanced deep cleaning of all surfaces, all equipment, all public spaces. Again, uh, we do have a detailed communicable disease plan and we will implement it. I couldn't recite it to you today uh, here in front of you. Uh, but then it will involve notification uh, to families that are there. Next question is, how are medical forms being handled this year? Uh, how are medical forms being handled this year? So uh, BSA just issued some guidance on that and we'll publish that to our website and make that part of our town hall. Uh, it is my understanding that if you have a uh, BSA Part AB health form within the last 12 months, it is valid that you may be able to attend, uh, attach a school sports physical uh, as well. I believe that was allowed. Um, and uh, we may, and we'll see how the guidance goes from DSA, we may ask that even Part C might be filled out in some cases if a uh, scout or adult volunteer has other underlying health issues uh, for attending. But uh, National uh, just released some guidance on that. So any, Anything new on that, Alex? Uh, the only other thing I'd add is uh, the exception uh, to the policy this year is only valid for uh, medical examinations that occurred uh, February 1st, 2019 or later. Um, and that ex extension only goes through August the 30th of this year. Um, so it's a six month, ex month extension and it is only for uh, BSA accredited camps. So those policies uh, would not 
carry over into uh, a unit level activity if you uh, felt the need for a, a part C at a unit level activity they are only making that exception for BSA accredited camps. So for example, if your troop is planning a trip along the Appalachian Trail, you should have an A, B, and C medical form uh, going on uh, going along with you. Okay. Next question. Do you foresee scouts needing to wear wear masks during these outdoor activities? This is projected to be one of the hottest summers on record. So the guidance about wearing masks is to wear masks when you can't keep six feet distance. So we will provide every person that comes to camp a uh, reusable, washable uh, face mask through a, a gator or buff. Um, but the guidance is to wear the face mask when you can't keep six feet distance. Camp program happens in the outdoors. Uh, so we don't anticipate that they'll be required to wear them 100% of the time. And since we're gonna reduce the amount of uh, interaction we have between cohorts and limit their engagement to just their small group at camp, uh, we think that will be necessary. They'll come into closest contact uh, just with members of their own troop. Um, so we, we will provide them, but they shouldn't be necessary 100% of the time. Will CFL still issue gear such as tents, patrol boxes, stoves, etc.? So the question was, will CFL still issue troop gear? And the answer is yes. Uh, we will continue to issue patrol boxes and other gear as needed for units. Uh, we will do enhanced cleaning uh, when those come back to us. So uh, our inspection standards may be a little more stringent on Saturday than they've been in the past. Uh, so work with us to make sure we're returning equipment's clean. Our staff will do another uh, deep cleaning as well before it goes back out. And we'll work with troops when they check equipment out to make sure they clean it again before they use it. Last question. Oh, two more. Sorry, two more. We got two good ones. Okay. Our troop typically attends another council's camp, which has been canceled this year. Are there still openings at CFL? So the question is, are there, if your troop has been canceled from another camp this summer, are there openings at CFL? And the answer is yes, we do have a few spots. We've actually been contacted by 16 troops so far about uh, transferring their, uh, their uh, registration to CFL this summer. So I would encourage you to reach out to Alex uh, or Patrick at the office, uh, and they're on our website, and it should be on the information you received yesterday about our summer scheduling. But reach out to Alex or Patrick about finding out about availability in July uh, for camp, or even possibly looking at that first week in August uh, for camp as well. Um, let me share another point that's come up too. I, I know a lot of us have used uh, a lot of uh, paid time off here in the last two months. Uh, vacation time or mandatory paid time off from our employers. Uh, and if your troop feels like it may be uh, missing an adult or two, to lead your unit, please let us know in advance. Uh, we'll work with you to make sure that your unit is within a cohort with the adequate adult leadership for the entire week. If we need to supplement your troop with camp staff uh, to be uh, embedded with your troop, uh, we'll do that. We have to bring in a couple alumni and uh, uh, college reserves uh, that come in and supplement the troop leadership uh, during summer camp this year. Let us know so we can prepare that as well. Uh, we want to make sure that every scout has a camp experience. Every scout that wants a camp experience this summer can have it. Uh, personally, I grew up at camp and uh, I know how much I valued my summers uh, at the hottest you know, possible scout camp in the world, right on the edge of the Everglades and uh, dodging alligators and wild pigs and Florida panthers and black bears and rattlesnakes was fun. So uh, camp is uh, important for young people physically, uh, mentally, emotionally, uh, socially. Uh, so every kid that is craving that, that experience of summer and is in a position uh, health-wise to attend, we want to make it available to them. Uh, we'll, make, we'll make sure we do everything we can to make sure we can uh, offer a camp program. And we're using three criteria to do this. Our first criteria is can we meet or exceed the health and safety guidance that's being prescribed by our health department and the BSA? If that is yes, can we deliver a program that is meaningful uh, for our young people that will further our mission and further, uh, you know, imbibe our young people with a scout open scout law and that passion for scouting? And if the answer is yes to that, the third question is, can we do so in a fiscally responsible manner? 
through buffs and sanitizers and cleaners and other things we're doing, we've added about $10,000 worth of expenses to our camp uh, program this summer. Um, and it's important that uh, we do that, but we also need to continue to make sure we can offer camp in a financially sustainable and financially responsible manner. And if the answer to all three is yes, then we're going to go for camp. And uh, we're continuing to work that way. Our mantra has been find a way to say yes. I feel like mission control with uh, Apollo 13, you know, we're working the problem. And every day as uh, opportunities are brought to us and ideas are brought to us to overcome, we're working with our council program cabinet, our risk management committee, our health and safety committee, our staff, health departments, to try and find a way to overcome those obstacles and, and meet those three criteria uh, to deliver a great program for young people this summer. All right, if you got more questions, please uh, keep them in the chat bar. Uh, John will make sure we get them and Alex now will get back to you as well. We're going to turn it back over now and we are going to go to um, Ron and Ron's going to end us out. Last joke, you ready? <laughs> All right, bear walks into a store and the storekeeper goes, what do you want? And the bear goes. <laughs> and the storekeeper goes, why such a big pause? Bear. All right, Ron. All right. I don't think we can edit those out either, so they'll be in the recording that we'll, uh, we'll post online. So, uh, Ron Wenzel, Director of Field Service, you guys haven't seen me. I've been uh, over at the, uh, the round table uh, for Cub Scouts tonight. So, uh, we are uh, doing uh, two different round tables this month. Really uh, happy how uh, hopefully they all turned out well and you guys had uh, a great time. There's a lot of people that, uh, that need to come together to really put these uh, to put these shows on. I just wanted to uh, thank uh, several people tonight. Anna Tui, who's our council commissioner, you heard from a couple times tonight. She just, uh, she gives outstanding leadership to all of our round tables and our round table staffs. And then uh, several of our other uh, uh, volunteers and staff that were involved tonight. Uh, Jim Falcher, uh, Clint Sharp, our scout executive you've heard from tonight. Luke Jones, Brian Kilmer, Sean Walters, Chris Zillner, Jim Peterson, behind the scenes helping us with uh, all the uh, technical stuff. Um, Maritza Godinez, Sean Nadeau, John Garn, Tanya Carver, Maria Feitlick, Zach Knock, Alex Clossing, Michael Niederman, and Jeremy Case, our ranger out here at uh, Camp Big Timber. So just again, we will uh, post uh, these recordings on our digital resources page. Uh, we're very uh, happy that you could join us tonight and hope that uh, we answered all your questions. If there's some questions we didn't get to, we'll still try to uh, answer those here before we leave tonight and uh, make sure that you have the answers. Otherwise, please give us a, a call and contact us and let us know how we can help you. Thank you and we'll uh, see you soon. Thank you.